first, I really appreciated the uh, presentation by uh, Honeybee. Very nice work. We also were uh, one of the groups that received a uh, cold tech. Uh, let's see here if we up here at the top. Or do we just go down? Do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, we received a a cold tech grant and. Um, we pursued a very specific uh, path with this. We have uh, had several uh, cryobot projects uh, at the lab now for the past uh, 10 years, uh, in fact, and have looked at a lot of different technologies, everything from uh, melt probes to closed cycle hot water drills. And a, um, an alternative that we hit on back in uh, 2015 uh, was using uh, tuned wavelength uh, lasers that match uh, the absorption frequency of uh, solid uh, ice, and so the idea came up as well, could you build a uh, small, highly efficient probe uh, to get through uh, a short distance of ice? We're not talking about a, um, uh, a full depth 20 kilometer penetrator here. This is more of a lightweight lander style mission, whether it's uh, a Martian polar cap or, or the Europa uh, lander. And uh, we, uh, we needed a place to, uh, to test this concept, and uh, so there really weren't any true cryobot uh, chambers available in which there was a large uh, cylinder of ice uh, kept at uh, Europa temperatures and, uh, and vacuum. And so uh, we designed and built this facility. We're operating it now. It is active up and running in uh, Austin. And uh, when we first uh, got it running and had, had a, a slug of ice in there sitting at uh, liquid nitrogen temperature, uh, the first thing that we uh, wanted to look at was an old question that had been kind of raised uh, in the, the 2000s uh, regarding whether a uh, pure, a passive thermal probe uh, was going to stall out. Uh, there were suggestions from this from uh, German research at uh, DLR. And so we built a, a, a 3.2 centimeter uh, diameter system uh, and tested that out in the ice, fully expecting that it was going to stall out. And so here's a video that hopefully will play. And this is, uh, this is sped up about 300 uh, times, just so you get the idea here that uh, things are not happening fast when you're going purely passive thermal. However, the thing that uh, surprised everybody was the fact that uh, it went down. Uh, we actually penetrated down to about two and a half uh, vehicle lengths before we had a, a stall out uh, at the vacuum uh, seal where the rod uh, goes into the chamber. Uh, but nothing appears to be stopping that. What we did see, however, was something very similar to what the LR saw, which is a trumpet-shaped uh, radiation ablated uh, zone going in uh, where you're wasting a lot of energy uh, just trying to get started. Um, if you plot this up, you can see the, the curve here of depth versus energy in a watt hours uh, that we're putting in here. Uh, there was a stall point in the, in the middle where the uh, uh, the vacuum seal uh, bound up. We had to jiggle it to get it to keep going. The reason we were doing this is because we had a uh, 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 etched marker on the rod to let us know how far the vehicle had gone down per watt hour uh, of descent. So once it started back up and we were below the hole closure rate, and, and by the way, the supposition that the hole closes uh, is no longer conjecture. Uh, we saw it. Uh, it's real. And after a certain point, it will bind around anything that is holding that probe up. So anything that goes below a vehicle length or two is going to have to be uh, free controlled uh, from this point forward. Uh, the nice thing about it was that green line that you see there was our thermal modeling uh, that was built around uh, the AMOD equation uh, for a traveling uh, vehicle. And so that was kind of reassuring to know that we're on target with our, our simulations as well, uh, looking at uh, cryovac behavior. Uh, the other nice thing is uh, we had designed the chamber to be large enough so that the boundary conditions would maintain Europa ice. Uh, and we tracked that performance over more than a kilowatt hour of uh, energy being pumped into the ice uh, from that probe. And you can see from the, the middle plot there, we had some minor changes in vacuum. Why? Because you're sublimating ice out into the atmosphere and the three-stage pumps have to pull that back down. Uh, the bottom one there, the green solid line, is the temperature of the ice near the wall of the chamber. It's sitting down there at liquid nitrogen temperature, not doing much. The dotted line is a string of thermocouples that was immediately adjacent to the probe itself. So you can see that we are radiating energy uh, out into the ice, and it's uh, picking that up. So the real test was 
what is going to happen if we change the game here. Instead of using a passive probe, we pump optical power uh, down to the system. Um, on a spacecraft, this would be a card, a board level laser for the test that we did. This was an industrial uh, 1070 nanometer uh, laser, uh, which we sent by fiber optic uh, thread. It's about a 200 uh, micron uh, device. And there were optics inside a uh, tellurium, or tellurium copper uh, head here. We had two different types uh, that we wanted to look at to kind of bracket the AMOD equation. One was where we had uh, the a portion of the beam, uh, about 54% of the power, uh, being dumped into the side walls of the vehicle to make sure that the vehicle didn't freeze in. Uh, and then the rest of that was going out optically into the ice, depositing over a distance of about uh, a vehicle and a half length uh, ahead of the system, allowing it to move through that ice as it, as it went forward. Um, and so here's a, here's a video of this. Uh, you see all the, the refreeze on the outside of the probe is dropping off now. It's turned up. Uh, we're pumping about uh, 340 watts uh, through this right now. And interestingly enough, the thing that we had conjectured for a long time is that it is sublimating out and forming a nice little uh, crystal cone uh, on the outside uh, of, the, um, of the hole. The one thing that was kind of a surprise uh, is that we were getting extremely high efficiency out of this thing. Okay. Uh, Honeybee can go back and uh, check these numbers if you wish, but we were getting three watt hours per centimeter uh, of descent. This was for a, a 3.2 centimeter diameter uh, probe. Uh, extremely efficient, uh, about 16 times better uh, than what we were seeing with the, uh, the passive probe. Um, we tried a shorter version. Uh, the idea here was, okay, what happens if you dump all the energy uh, into the ice? And so because we're doing this optically, uh, we can actually determine how far ahead of the vehicle uh, we want to deposit the, the energy. And uh, so here's a, here's a version of this test here. Again, this is sped up about 30 times. You'll notice our little Lego helicopter is moving. That's because sublimate is flashing out of the hole and creating a bit of pressure, uh, which is sensed. Not that we put it in there to do that, but it was a, a side product. You'll notice that you can still see just the rear rim of the, the vehicle in there. Uh, the reason uh, for that is because the back end of the vehicle uh, froze down uh, to a temperature and allowed it to bind in the hole uh, once we got uh, deep enough. And so the answer is we had correctly bracketed the, the AMOD equation. What needs to be done now is to tune how much of the energy you want to pump into the sidewall, how you distribute that through bimetallic and heat pump systems, and then how much you put uh, into the, the nose to get the fastest descent for the least amount of energy. So if we just look for some quick uh, comparison here, the red line uh, is the passive probe. The blue line uh, is the longer probe in which we're putting a little bit of the heat uh, into the sidewalls. Uh, we're looking at about three watt hours per centimeter for the laser probe versus about uh, 24 uh, watt hours uh, for the, um, the passive probe. And the speed is about actually nine times faster uh, with the, uh, the laser probe. So we're, we're in the limits of what we would expect, for example, to be comparison, comparing ourselves with a mechanical drill at the surface. Uh, also, the interesting thing here is that while many people have thought there would be a starting problem uh, for this class of instrument, both the laser and the passive probe, uh, we've not seen that uh, in actual testing. How are we doing on time? Two. Okay, um, last slide here before conclusions. Uh, this is comparing uh, the laser probe in blue, uh, long version versus the short version. Uh, again, the issue was that eventually we had a lockup uh, in the vehicle. In the case of the blue one, it was not the probe itself. It was the support rod that we were using to measure the descent rate. So uh, from this point forward, what we're doing is putting a deployable fiber on the back of the vehicle, a small fiber spore that carries about five meters uh, worth of fiber and the next tests that are scheduled now for September uh, will be free fall tests with the uh, uh, probe spooling out uh, the fiber uh, as it goes down and hopefully we'll get probably on the order of two and a half meters worth of uh, penetration data. Um, so just a couple of things uh, for the takeaway. Uh, we have an operational chamber uh, right now that is effectively the surface of Europa. Uh, we've got good vacuum uh, sitting at 77 Kelvin uh, and 2.3 meters of ice. Uh, that you can go through. If anybody uh, needs that kind of uh, facility, let us know. We'd be happy to collaborate. Um, 
When we look at Europa surface conditions, we now have hard data uh, showing what some of these probes do. Uh, the hot penny probe actually works. Uh, it's just very slow and energy inefficient, certainly for the uh, initial stage. Uh, the good news is there that several different types of probes uh, that are possible candidates for getting all the way through the ice cap are now enabled by that piece of data. It'll take a little while to get a couple of vehicle lengths through, but once you do, the hole is going to close. We saw that. That's real. Uh, and then you're going to build up vapor pressure to allow uh, melt probes to actually work in that environment. Uh, we have a test coming up. Uh, it's called Prometheus under the Sesame program, uh, in which we're building a micro uh, closed cycle hot water drill uh, to take off once it achieves passive mode descent and locks into the ice. Um, and then this fall, uh, we're looking at uh, onboard uh, fiber spooling uh, for the, uh, the Archimedes probe. The utility of that approach uh, is that if you're looking at trying to get information uh, in the 1 to 10 to even 25 meter uh, descent range into ice, this is an extremely energy efficient uh, approach using the laser. Um, in fact, it is something that would work off a battery powered uh, non-RTG uh, lander. And so uh, for us, these were uh, surprising uh, pieces of data that have now come out of the chamber. Maybe one, one quick question while we're transitioning here. That was super cold, Bill. Um, Sam Howell, JPL. Uh, my question is, right now you have a relatively narrow diameter probe. And I wonder if the ratio of the diameter of the collimated beam to the diameter of the probe matters, where you're actually dumping that optical energy into. If you scale up to the size of something that can be instrumented, do you have to scale up the size of the collimated beam, and if so, does you know the energy required to get the optical energy into the ice go up with like R squared or something? Uh, we've played with both of these. Uh, the original probe that we, we developed in uh, warm ice uh, had a much bigger lens. Uh, this was more about trying to uh, compare it with an existing passive probe that we had. So we had apples to apples uh, comparison. And so those are, those are experimental variables uh, that we are uh, looking at. Um, this is not really a, a, a cryobot, okay, in the sense that you're carrying an intelligence system with you and it's a self-contained device. It requires a surface-based uh, laser power uh, supply to do that. However, uh, what I didn't have time to go into there is that it will carry a fiber uh, Raman uh, probe uh, that does a side look uh, into the ice as it goes down. This is being developed uh, in parallel on this project by Nathan Brommel's group uh, out in uh, San Francisco. Thanks. <laughs> 